Hey guys, good morning. And today is Purple Day. We're going to be doubling down on the Purple Rain portion of this world history diagram that was revealed to us. What is this all about? Well, if you're wondering, we had placed the colors of the rainbow spectrum over the timeline of world history. We found Jesus in the middle, and we extrapolated that it could be 2,000 years since Jesus was crucified, that the end days will come. And this is where we'll be focusing our attention on this part of the timeline. Now, no man knows the day or the hour, but we don't know if any man knows the decade, which is kind of what we're narrowing it down to. So, we will see how all this plays out, of course, over the next several decades. If this is, in fact, what Jesus was trying to show us when he explained the 42 generations before him, we will have to see. He was in the middle. He was crucified in the middle between the two thieves. Who are the thieves? Well, they stole the fallen ones, stole People's salvation before Abraham in this 2000 year period. That's one thief and the other thief are the unholy fallen ones. Once again, just like in the days of Noah in this 2000 year period, we can all agree that this is when the dark ages happened. They stole the Bible from people. And of course, now they're stealing our freedoms and rights and trying to force us to get stickers. So, these are the two thieves surrounding the generations of Jesus that he outlined, the 42 total generations. So, let's get back here into the chat. Looks like we are connected up. You guys can all hear me. I did some more digging. And look at this picture of the presidents. All wearing their purple ties. And in fact... The purple presidents are mentioned right here in the violet Wikipedia page. It says right here, the two more recent presidents all wearing violet ties. Now, why do you think that is? We are in the purple rain. Now, we also know that purple is the favorite color of the Queen of England. And her birthday falls on a death day of a very famous person, Prince himself. April 21st is when he died. Now, what's so special about that date that he died on the day that the queen was born, April 21st, the 111th day of the year? The prince and his queen. What does all of it mean? What do purple presidents have to do with Prince. Let's read the lyrics to Purple Rain. And I want you to understand what we're looking at here. It says, Times are changing. Let's zoom this in here. These are the lyrics from Purple Rain. I believe this came out in 88, I want to say. Times are changing. And so what is that? It's they shall seek to change times and laws. And he says, it's time we all reach out for the new. What is that? The new world order. You see, you say you want a leader, but you can't seem to make up your mind. Well, that's the red and the blue, the political parties. I think you better close it. And let me guide you to the purple rain. And of course, that's the red and blue mixed together to make the purple rain. Now, what could all this mean? Well, we know that Adam's name means clay. We know that stickers are made out of steel, iron, mixing with the watery clay. Steel and iron is blue. Blue mixed with red makes purple. We're here. We are at the end of world history. 
So what else is special about the day that Prince died, April 21st, the 111th day of the year? Well, there are 111 days left in the year when he opened Paisley Park. Let me pull that up so you could see this. I'm not making this up. Here's the opening date of Paisley Park, his famed, uh, I guess, studio. And what is so special about this date, Blind 11, 1987? Well, this was the exact halfway point through the timeline of these buildings' existence. Now, many of you had asked about Building 7. That is the building that stood between the two of them. Let's go back in here and I'll show you. Here's where Building 7 sits in the timeline, right underneath the 42 generations. It's the middle part. Why? Because 2,000 years divided by 42 generations, it's 47, which was Building 7 was 47 stories tall, opened in 1987, the same year that Paisley Park opened. Now, before you turn this live show off because you think this is all ridiculous, understand that this year that Paisley Park opened was also the halfway point in Prince's life. What does this mean? These are the two pillars. 2,000 years here, 2,000 years there. The two thieves that st try to steal your salvation by having you dual, dualistically seeing life, believing that one side is better than the other when they're both deceiving you instead of looking to the middle, which is where Jesus sits. So, Paisley Park. Let's take a look at this. This is the Purple Rain Man. And as you can see, he was born in 58 and died in 2016. 1987 was the halfway point in his life. The 29th year. After Paisley Park opened, he would live another 29 years. Now, people call this a sacrifice. These people sacrifice their own frequently, whether the person is good or bad. I don't like to get into whether the person is good or bad or not, because some people have emotional attachments to these people and believe I, I, my personal feeling is all these people are evil, but I don't know that. Now, let's get back into the color purple or violet. Violet is the color of royalty. Let's go back to it here. This is the Wikipedia page for violet. This is the color of royalty. And it has a frequency that reveals its true nature. In terahertz, let's go back up to the top here. What is the frequency of a violet? Six, six, six terahertz. That's the range. Of course, it's other numbers as well, but this is the cutoff range in terms of frequency. The color violet is a very bizarre color because it almost does not exist in our reality. It's barely visible in the spectrum. It's very hard to reproduce. It's a mysterious color associated with magic. We did a lot of work in 2013 on this channel, as a matter of fact, on the color heliotrope purple. And we looked at the history of this way back then, seeming to come full circle with what we're now discovering about the timeline of human history being in the purple zone. So what did we find? What did we research back in 2013 about the purple? Well, we found that it, in antiquity, this purple color was very prized and associated with royalty and that it took many, many seashells 
in order to create the color purple. In fact, it took 12,000 seashells that they harvested. Now, it's they have to crack open these shells and pull out a very specific portion of the snail, which is a very, very, very tiny piece. They then put it in a vat. They then leave it out in the sun. There's your sun worship for days and days until it reaches a specific color. Let me see if I can find this here. So I want to show you guys how this is made. Um, let's go into here. Shells. Let's find this. Oh, it's not on that page. Uh, maybe it's here. Purple. All right, let's go in here and see if we can find this. There's the Queen of England. Her favorite color is purple. Okay. The process of making dye was long, difficult, and expensive. Thousands of tiny snails had to be found. Their shells cracked. The snail removed. Mountains of empty shells have been found at the ancient sites of Sidon and Tyre. The snails were left to soak. Then a tiny gland was removed and the juice extracted. Now understand that a seashell is an unclean creature. It's a mollusk. You starting to get the drift here? The juice extracted and put in a basin which was placed in the sunlight. There, a remarkable transformation took place. In the sunlight, the juice turned white, then yellow-green, then green, then violet, then red, which turned darker and darker. Uh, you seeing what's going on here? The shell, the tiny part, the gland that was removed, and the juice that was extracted from it, follows the exact order of the rainbow. I'll say that again. The gland in the juice from it follows the exact same colors of the rainbow in order. Uh, now, it picks up, though, in the middle. Yellow, green, green, violet, red. Yellow, green, green, violet, and then back to red. See this? I'm not making this up. In order. Now, what could be the mechanism for this? Is this something magic? This is why it's probably associated with magic. Now, understand that the color purple is also mentioned extensively in the Old Testament. but And it was associated with God's holy people. But that color was made a different way. I believe that it's made from vegetables, not from unclean mollusks. So there's the difference. But this is how the enemy chooses to come about the purple color. Now let's keep going with this because there's more. So we just found a bit of a miracle here. The sunlight causing the juice from the this mollusk to go through the color spectrum in its appearance. At that point, the process had to be stopped at exactly the right time to obtain the desired color, which could range from a bright crimson to a dark purple, the color of dry blood. Then either wool, linen, or silk could be dyed. And this is how they did it. Now... Let's go back to here. Because there's more. There's always more, right? I don't know why these tabs keep popping off of here. Guess I'll have to figure it out. Let's try this. Pull this back there. Let me fix this real quick, you guys, because I know it's going to mess me up. I always like to uh, put these links in the pinned comments for you guys. So... We are in 
the violet age of man. Now here's another clue. We picked up on this in, where did it go? Again in 2013, in I Pet Goat 2. Uh, this is a, an animated film again that came out in 2012. The following year, we did a lot of videos on I Pet Goat 2. This mother is holding a child. And this seems to be associated with Justinian and one of these churches, these Orthodox churches that has recently been turned into a mosque. And this image of this woman holding a child is in the mosaic, in the ceiling of the Justinian church. Justinian, of course, was associated with Apollo. We link that in with Janus as well and the most recent president. What does all this mean? Well, the mother is holding what appears to be a jar of heliotrope purple made from seashells. Remember, it takes 12,000 shells to make one ounce of this heliotrope purple. So I believe that what they're actually showing here is the 12,000 shells to make one ounce. And we had figured this out in 2013. She's sitting in a shell. See this? So that's the clue. Now, here's where the plot thickens. Because violet is also the official color of a bizarre character in human history called Saint Germain. And he's been tied by many groups, many New Age groups, to Drump himself. They have Several of them have claimed that Drump is a iteration or reincarnation of of Saint Germain and when people say reincarnation to me that's code word for demon possession because demons could jump bodies so once again it's clear to me that we are in the last days of the purple rain now here's where things get very very interesting because one of you asked me a very very important question about the prophecy of Enoch what was the prophecy of Enoch? Well, this is Enoch chapter 10. And he says here that the fallen angels will be bound for 70 generations underneath the earth, even to the day of judgment and of consummation. Now, we had recently covered another prophecy of Enoch, saying that after these 70 generations, the hot springs of the earth will grow cold. These Then these fallen angels will be resurrected to judgment, not so they can live again, but to judgment in the last days, in the final days, in the great battle. So the person who asked me about this asked how this 70 generations fits into our timeline. And that is a very, very good question. So I began to dig because I was curious myself. Now we had covered 70 generations before, years ago, and discovered that we are at the end of the 70 generations, but I couldn't find that video and I thought it would be a really good idea to just revisit this, restudy it, see if we came to the same conclusions that we did years ago, that we are here at the end of the 70 generations. So I began to dig. Now, this action, let's go back to the thing here. I told you guys this was going to be a crazy show. This action of binding these angels in the earth takes place in Enoch chapter 10. And an angel was sent to Lamech's son, which of course was Noah. Let's go back to that part so you can see that. Lamech's son was Noah. He says, and sent Arsayulur to the son of Lamech. That's Noah. And this is when the action of binding Azazel took place. Sometime around the birth of Noah or when Noah was a, a young man. Azazel was bound. Now, this Azazel is a very curious demon he's probably satan himself 
But as you can see, his name contains the spell. What is the spell? The spell is the alphabet. You guys, make no mistake. Our English alphabet is very evil. Uh, it's different than the other alphabets. It's different than the original languages of the Bible, Hebrew, Aramaic. We go from A to Z. Why do you think that is? It's because A to Z is Azazel. And he wants to be the Alpha and the Omega. He wants to be the A to Z. This is why you can spell lots of words backwards. And they say other cryptic, bizarre, and dark things when you spell words backwards. We've done it a hundred times on this channel. Exposed the spelling, the spell, the black magic blackboard. So, what generation are we in now? Let's take a look. These are the generations since the 1900s that they've named. They've given these arbitrary names to. And as you can see down here, Generation Z ended in 2012. And now we are back in Generation Alpha. They call it, which ends in 2025. A to Z, but it's backwards. So you have to wonder, is this Azazel saying that he'll be released soon to judgment as he prepares for Armageddon? Now, let's get into detail about what exactly God told them to do to these fallen angels. Because he gave them very specific orders. Then the Most High, the Great and Holy One, spoke and sent this angel, who I can't pronounce his name, to the son of Lamech, which is Noah, saying, Say to him in my name, Conceal thyself, then explain to him the consummation which is about to take place. For all the earth shall perish, the waters of the deluge shall come over the whole earth, and all things which are in it shall be destroyed. He's talking about the first destruction of earth and now teach him he may escape and how his seed may remain in all the earth again the lord said to raphael bind his azel hand and foot cast him into darkness and opening the desert which is dudael cast him in there throw him up throw upon him hurled and pointed stones covering him with darkness and there shall rem shall he remain forever cover his face that he may not see the light and in the great day of judgment, let him be cast into the fire. This is the second judgment. Restore the earth which the angels have corrupted and announce life to it that I may revive it. All the sons of men shall not perish in consequence of every secret by which the watchers have destroyed and which they have taught their offspring. They're talking about the revelation of the secrets of technology. All the earth has been corrupted by the effects of the teaching of Azazel. To him, therefore, ascribe the whole crime. He becomes the scapegoat, right? We just covered this on a previous show. To Gabriel, also the Lord said, Go to the biters, the reprobates, to the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, the offspring of the watchers, from among men. Bring them forth and excite them one against another. So they're fighting each other. You guys, the days of Noah will be like our end times, which with these titans battling it out. It says, let them perish by mutual slaughter for length of days shall not be theirs. They shall all entreat thee, but their father shall not obtain their wishes respecting them for they shall hope for eternal life and that they may live each of them 500 years to Michael. Likewise, the Lord said, so here's another command, go and announce his crime to Samyaza and to the others who are with him, who have been associated with women and they might, might be polluted with their impurity. And when all their sons shall be slain, then they shall see the perdition of their beloved, bind them for 70 generations onto the earth even to the day of judgment and of consummation until the judgment, the effect of which will last forever completed. 
be completed. Then shall they be taken away into the lowest depths of the fire in torments and in confinement shall they be shut up forever. Immediately after this shall he take together with them, burn and perish, and shall be bound in, until the consummation of many generations. Destroy all the souls addicted to dalliance and the offspring of the watchers, for they have tyrannized over mankind. Let every oppressor perish from the face of the earth. Let every evil work be destroyed. The plan of righteousness and of rectitude appear, and its produce to become a blessing. Righteousness and rectitude shall be forever planted with delight, and then shall all the saints give thanks, and live until they have begotten a thousand children, while the whole period of their youth and their Sabbath shall be completed in peace. In those days all there shall be cultivated in righteousness. It shall be wholly planted with trees and filled with benediction. Every tree of delight shall be planted in it. Now, these fallen ones were also said in the book of Enoch to have sinned against reptiles and birds and beasts as well as fish. The giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds, beasts, reptiles, and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. What does all this mean? What does this sinning against these creatures mean? I believe these were genetic sins. Exactly what is about to be unleashed on mankind. And these genetic sins against all these creatures created titans, giants, and make no mistake, there were likely large battles of these titans. As Enoch 10 says, that they would fight each other and destroy their own offspring. They're genetically hybridized giant creatures. Right? They were probably demon-possessed, unclean dinosaurs. That's what I believe that these were. And... Some of them may have been bound along with the fallen ones in the hills of the earth. Now, we've seen how demonic spirits can possess animals. You can watch these animal videos in nature and there's a clear distinction between even animals of the same, um, I guess you call it, kind. There are some animals that just have something wrong with them. They're extremely aggressive, bloodthirsty. Bears, for instance. There are some bears that never draw blood. They just eat berries their whole life. There are other bears that are bloodthirsty. I'm thinking to myself, probably this was a lot like what the pigs behave like when Jesus cast the demons into them. So we know that demons can possess animals. And what if some of these titans, these huge beasts were thrown into the earth until the end of the 70 generations. And that these were the days of Noah. This is what it was like during this time. These creatures and fallen angels battling, giants battling it out in the sight of men. Pure chaos. Godzilla. Kong. And all sorts of other abominable creatures battling it out in the sight of men. Imagine what the skies looked like. I truly believe we are approaching these days once again. Creatures coming up from the deep, especially from the ocean, because that is where all the, the this is where the sin is. This is exactly the scenario that they paint with Godzilla and these creatures. They come up out of the ground. Demonic giants, offspring destroying one another in these great battles. Now, when will all this happen? And that's the subscriber that asked me the question. Let's break that down. Now, as you just as we just read, Enoch says that the fallen will be released in 70 generations. Now, what is a generation? Well, we really don't know. 
Some people surmise that a generation, according to what Enoch said, is 70 years. So let's go back to this timeline because we got to look at this here. I should make sure we're connected first before I keep going with this. This is a very important show. And uh, appears as though we are. Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Okay, so let's go back to this timeline. And what we have here is Noah being born about 3000 BC. Let's look it up here. Here's Noah right around very close to 3000 BC, as you can see here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There it is. And Enoch 106 says that these fallen ones transgressed in the generation of Jared. Let's look that up. Enoch 106. Here it is here. And it says that here's 106. First Enoch 106, fragment of the book of Noah. It says here, the generation of Jared, my father, they transgress the word of the Lord. That is the law of heaven. And behold, they commit sin and transgress the commandment by uniting themselves with women. Now, who is Jared? Jared is way back here. Here's Noah and here's Jared way back here. Jared was Enoch's father. Then came Methuselah, then Lamech, then Noah. So these fallen ones had been on the earth for a long time before Noah ever showed up. The judgment of them didn't come until Noah was born. So now we're on the trail. We can now begin to calculate when these 70 generations ended. But again, all this depends on what you consider the amount of time a generation is. We're guessing 70, but if you don't think it's 70, then this, you're not going to, you know, this isn't going to resonate with you. That's what you got to pray about it. So Enoch 106 said they transgressed in the generation of Jared, Enoch's father, Noah's ancestor back several generations. Jared was born in about 3600 BC. Let's go back to the timeline here. All right, let's move this over. Here's Jared way back here, 3600 BC. So they transgressed sometime during Jared's generation, around the time Enoch was born. So sometime during this his life, the fallen angels fell to earth. But the prophecy is given around the time of Noah, right? I think we can all agree that that's when the prophecy was given in Enoch 10. So we've got to go back over here, right? I'm just giving you the history. So here's Noah about the time the prophecy was given, right in here about 2800 BC, probably, give or take, right? So are you ready for this? Let's count backwards. 70 generations times 70 years is 4,900 years. So we're going to count backwards 4,900 years from today, 2021. That puts us at 2880 BC, right around the time Noah was born. This is when the prophecy was given. Now, many scholars place Noah's birth almost 500 years later. Why would they do that? Let's take a look. They would do that so that you would think that the end times aren't going to be for another 500 years, right? But this site, I believe, gets it right. It says, the following timeline of the Old Testament has been compiled with the assumption that genealogies are literal and complete. If so, God created the world about 6,000 years ago, which is what I believe. All years are approximate. And here they have Noah born in 2950 BC, which means we are at the end of the 70 generations. Now, why can I be confident that this estimate of Noah's birth is 
better than the 2500 BC estimate of Noah's birth? Well, uh, I believe God revealed this to us through this timeline. This 2,000 years and 2,000 years surrounding the 42 generations. I believe this is the clue that puts everything in perspective that it's all happening now, any day now. As a matter of fact, the fallen will be released for judgment with mankind. And when they release, it will be a battle of the Titans. Armageddon. Will there be Godzilla-like creatures, King Kong, giants fighting like in the days of Noah? Well, I can tell you this. The Bible says that men's hearts will fail them out of fear. What could cause such fear? Uh, Godzilla coming up out of the ground, just like you saw in the movies. That would be the kind of fear. They could stop somebody's heart. So that's what I wanted to present to you guys today. I was really excited to do this show because the research just blew me away. Couldn't even believe it. But again, what is a generation? That's what you have to pray about. God is the 70 generations, 70 years. Is, is our research on the when Noah was born accurate? These are things you can pray about and study yourself. You can also ask God about the validity of the book of Enoch. Now remember, the book of Enoch was found with the scrolls and the rest of the Bible. The problem is, is when they were found in these caves, nobody bothered to add the book of Enoch back into the Old Testament. It originally was in the Old Testament. It was removed in like 500 AD, they removed it from the Bible. They said it didn't fit in there anymore. And then they had more confirmation in the 1940s when they found the book of Enoch alongside all of these other books of the Bible, the Old Testament, that predated Christ coming to earth, predated it. These copies were like from, I think, 250 B.C. Why didn't they update the Bible? Why? Because then they would have to admit they were wrong by removing it to begin with. Right? So, there is your confirmation that Enoch is, in fact, part of the gospel. Not the gospel, but part of the Bible. And we should look at it. So, here we are, you guys. Now, do I believe we are actually in the, um, what do you call it? I'm drawing a blank today. The tribulation? I'm not sure. There are a lot of Christians that are suffering and losing their lives right now. We live in America, so we're shielded from a lot of that. But there are a lot of Christians that are suffering right now. Having their lives taken in a lot of countries. So that will give us an idea of, you know, if we, once we figure out that we're in the tribulation or not, some people say it's going to last seven years. Others people think it's going to be shorter. I don't know. You got to read the Bible, read your Bible and figure it out. You know? All right. Wow. Tomorrow on a lighter note, we are going to get back into dead giveaway. Another show. I got, as you can see, I got all the tabs pulled up. We're going to cover some of these stories. Updates on CV-19, where we're all headed. They cannot help themselves. They have to keep mentioning the VC passports. Now, I have good news. Uh, Arkansas is pushing through legislation to ban VC passports. Notice how you're not hearing that in the news, but I found a story saying that that is indeed the case. It hasn't gone through yet. Let's pull it up here. Hasn't gone through yet, but they're trying to talk. They're talking about it. They've, they're starting the process. This is good news. Another state that will ban this. Okay. So we'll be talking all about all that tomorrow. Glad you guys stuck it out with this show. 
I know it was a lot of information, but, you know, crazy like, right? Okay, let's, let's read in the chat here for a little bit. Okay. Ah, I love you guys. I'm, I'm glad you guys have a love of the truth and a love of God to, you know, want to know about all this stuff. The Bible says in the last days, the love of him will grow cold. That, well, that ain't happening here. You guys are on it. And I hope that you keep that zeal. I hope you keep that enthusiasm because we're going to need it going into the last days. Okay, what do we have here? Hey, hello, Autumn. Hello, just me, Joan. Yes, the earth is full of foul spirits reserved for fire. Now, this fits right in to... Um, <laughs> Well, we won't go into that. It's a whole nother show. I was going to drag in the eye model that we had looked at. The the aqueous humor, the front of the eye, the fluid in the front represent the watery depths of hell underneath the seas. But that's a whole nother show. Enoch was not because God took him. Yes. Okay. Julie just got here. Sorry, Julie. I think the show's over, but um, you can play this back again, obviously. Uh, sorry that you showed up late. A lot of you guys aren't getting the notifications, but look, we're on here at the same time every morning. So don't wait for the notification. Just show up at like, I try to wait till like 830 Eastern. So that would be 530 Pacific time. Um, I try to wait till then. Because I know that we're dealing with uh, West Coast as well. So just show up every day and we'll be here. Don't wait for the notifications because YouTube's not going to notify you. Like probably a third of you tell me that you don't get notifications. So. All right. Yeah, we're going to end the show here. Um, I love each and every one of you. Have a great day. And be safe.